Keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. Karasuno vs Nekuma perfectly embodies this phrase. I mean, these guys are the best of friends, of course, but on the sound of a whistle, they become each other's worst rivals. This match was a monumental milestone in their history. Here's why. It all started when Ike Ukai and Yasafumi Nekomata first met during a practice game as middle schoolers and soon developed a unique kinship with the other. They were friends but also rivals. Ukai and Nekomata always wanted to play against each other in an official game but the chance never came. Eventually, they started to coach the school's volleyball teams but the two remained good friends and always kept their rivalries intact. As they grew older though, they both retired without ever seeing their dreams of playing against one another ever become a reality. Decades later, by a very clumsy twist of fate, these two schools found themselves on the crossroads again and this time not just succeeded in developing new friendships but also fierce rivalries. This new generation trained with one another, learned from the other until finally they found themselves facing each other on a court of the nationals tournament fulfilling the generational old destiny. As the friends became enemies for the final time, one thing was very evident from the get-go. They played against each other like they have never done against anyone before. The sheer aggression in the first rally caught everyone by surprise. They literally wanted to ferociously devour every last scrap of their enemy's bones and boy were they having fun doing just that. Determined to crush Karasuno, a usually defensive Nekoma came out swinging with a first tempo synchro attack and were able to score off of Karasuno's 5-man version of the synchro attack. That sent everyone off their rockers. This wasn't it though. Kuro serves, leaves technical blocking, Fukunaga strong spikes and even Kenma's hustle to set for his spiker showed a side of Nekoma that was pretty exciting. And if you thought Karasuno was chilling around, you'd be wrong. Kageyama was on his stuff. I'm confident someone injured his shoulder receiving all those goddamn spikes. Nishinoya came up to the front to set for Asahi who sent the ball on a vacation. Even Yamaguchi and Suki did some damage to Nekoma. I mean these guys were on fire. And as exciting and thrilling was this match to watch, this was still a national tournament and Nekoma knew this. With a new and improved Karasuno, they needed a way to tame them and Kenma figured out exactly how to tie the monster down. Finally, Hinata was about to experience something he had never felt before. He was about to experience. For Hinata, it wasn't just physical but also a mental challenge. He knew that he was on the court only because of his extreme athleticism and relentless stamina. He would be useless and bound for a replacement without those and he knew without Kageyama setting for him, he was nothing. It was painful seeing what Kenma had done to him. Using his keen sense of observation, Kenma was able to contain and restrict Hinata to a level never seen before. Let's see how he managed to pull this off. First off, Kenma noticed that Hinata had changed a it. He was able to receive the ball to a degree and wasn't just running mindlessly into an empty area. If this Hinata was to do a quick attack with Kageyama, it would be a challenge to stop them. To avoid this, Kenma asked his servers to aim at Hinata, which would force him to bend the knee and take him out of an attack. This would essentially make him score less, thereby making it easier for Nekoma to catch up to Karasuno. However, Hinata found a way to counter this. He basically went into the approach right after the dig and did slide attacks. And while this was certainly an upbeat moment for Hinata, Kenma was in the mood for something much more sinister. Kenma was about to cut the wings of Hinata. If successful, his plan would suffocate Hinata entirely and make him a non-entity in the match. His plan was to use Hinata's own teammates against him. Kenma did this by directing other Nekuma players where to serve and forcing the back row players like Nishinoya and Daiji to block Hinata's approach. Hinata needed his approach to be an effective attacker. With his approach gone, he was useless. And this scared Hinata. He became angsty and ever eager to jump and contribute somehow. This led to him making mistakes like the net foul. Right after this, he spiked and out as well. It certainly didn't help that he was stuffed by a triple block when he did get a chance to attack. As it turned out, all of this was foreshadowed by Kenma. His plan was more than successful. As much as I hate to say it, Kenma had beaten Hinata in this match. But had Kenma beaten Karasuno, there are 6 players on the team and if you manage to take one out, there are others to pick him back up. And in this case, it was none other than Kageyama who stepped forward. Kageyama brought back Hinata his...
Kagama being the monster that he is, figured out what Kenma's scheme was and with a little bit of inspiration from Ukai, did a super high set for Hinata. The extra time was all Hinata needed to get his approach and do his newly learned jump to dunk over Nekuma. Kenma could tell something was off as seen by his utterly freaked out expression. But above all, just look at Hinata's face here, so happy and gleeful. Didn't this make you want to hug him until you squeeze the juice out of him? Hey, now that Hinata was free, you could see how much he had grown. Nekuma threw triple blocks upon triple blocks on him and he did not fall the ones. A dink, a finger spike. Hinata had ammunition now to beat the wall that the opponent threw at him. All this finally made Kenma realize that Hinata in fact has taken a big jump towards becoming a monster himself. With Nekuma out of tricks to contain Hinata, they brought about Enoyuka on the court. Yeah. He didn't do much. The match from this point though only became sharper and sharper with incredible performances being shown by both the sides. Long rallies, unshakable focus and resolve took the place of tricks and tactics. It honestly was pretty intense. But ultimately, Nekuma would lose this set due to the slippery ball from all the sweat of the players during the duration of the game. That's disgusting. This meant Karasuno won the match and the battle of the garbage dump was finally concluded with the victor being the Crows. Here's what I wanna say. Nekuma had just lost the match and the general feeling over there wasn't that negative. Sure, they were sad, obviously, but for being such stringent rivals of Karasuno, there were no hard feelings. There was mutual respect, celebration and a feeling of general reconciliation after a long hard battle. You couldn't help but go, aww. The motto of Nekuma is stay connected and I take it to be more than just being a reference towards the sport itself. It's about the connection between the team members, between people. It's about the connections in life that you make with people you meet and frankly those connections make life worth it.